today, do not do this or you can melt your GPU. AI PCs aren't doing well, new desktop APUs, and AMD is launching their fastest gaming CPUs yet. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. If you follow what one PSU maker suggests, you could literally melt your core. This story originally comes from Igor's lab, and it's a doozy. It all started when one user noticed that the 12V 2x6 connector, which came with their PSU, wouldn't fit in their GPU. It's one of these cables with a 90 degree bend. So he contacted Cooler Master, who suggested something pretty wild. At first, I thought this was just some intern trying to go above and beyond, but if if you look here, they literally provided pictures and everything. So in the response, Cooler Master said, thank you for reaching out to Cooler Master customer support team. We understand that you require an additional cable with a different angle to fit your GPU cards 12VHPWR connector. We are pleased to inform you that the Cooler Master 12VHPWR cable features a special design that allows you to adjust the angle or even convert it to a flat type to suit your needs. And you can see here it says, please follow the steps below to modify the cable. And it shows there's the cable, obviously, and then you use something small to pop open both tabs and voila, you now have a straight cable. But Obviously, we know that you definitely don't want to play around with the 12VHPWR connector. Luckily, the user didn't do that. And it's lucky because according to Igor's lab, who's definitely been someone at the forefront of this cable disaster, says if you bend the factory bent wires of a 12V 2x6 cable straight again, you change the inner geometry of the entire strand. These cables are not fixed randomly, but are routed in such a way that each strand runs into the crimp sleeve with a defined voltage. If the bending radius is subsequently changed, the mechanical forces are shifted along the individual conductors. And you can see down here specifically he states that even minimal relief at this point is enough to measurably increase the contact resistance. And we all know what happens when you increase contact resistance on these cables. You can actually see what he's talking about right here. If you straighten it, it puts tons of pressure on the contact points, tons of pressure in multiple areas. And in fact, you can see that it's kind of turned right here. So yeah, definitely not good. But get this, it actually doesn't help even if none of that was a factor because even when you pull out the housing and take it apart and straighten it, it still doesn't let you insert it all the way thanks to this part of the housing still remaining even after you take off the part that forces it to bend. So yeah, this was terrible advice from Cooler Master and definitely something you do not want to do. Really, I think Cooler Master should make a statement on this and fix their terrible customer service process. Now, if you didn't get a chance to pick up some of the really good PC hardware deals earlier in the month, no worries, because Micro Center still has some of the best deals going on right now. It's a part of their fall savings event, and they sponsored today's video so I could tell you all about it. For example, they currently have the 98 X 3D for just $439.99. The 7800X3D is just $379.99. Even the 9950X3D is on sale. And of course, they have tons of other deals from gaming notebooks to power supplies and more. If you've never been to a micro center, you have got to go. They're really the only place at this point that has everything you could want for a PC build, all in one store. I'm talking walls of motherboards, PC cases, CPUs, GPUs use everything. And I have some great news because Micro Center is coming to Phoenix, Arizona. And if you're in the area, you can sign up to win a free 128 gig flash drive. Check that out and those awesome new fall savings event deals by visiting my links in the description below. Next up for today, AI PCs are apparently not selling all that well. Who would have guessed that adding a new way to spy on your computer via their recall feature or offering ambiguous new AI features that no one really asked for wouldn't cause a massive surge in demand? It goes back to AI products feeling like a solution in search of a problem instead of the other way around. This story originally comes from a new report by DigiTimes and later reported by WCCF Tech, who claims that Intel is increasing 
increasing prices of their Raptor Lake CPUs, meaning their 14th gen parts, by a whopping 10%. Not too long ago, Intel themselves claimed higher demand for these parts. It says, what we're really seeing is much greater demand from our customers for N1 and N2 products so they can continue to deliver systems price points that consumers are really demanding. They go on to blame concerns over tariffs, but they claim that this ultimately comes from user demand, not a possible scenario where tariffs can make prices rise. Essentially, it sounds like their new chips are just too expensive. And we know that the price of including memory on chip for their Lunar Lake chips were not cheap. But according to DigiTimes, it says the sources did suggest that the prices of Raptor Lake slash the refresh series CPUs have been increased by around 10%, but the prices have been inflated by over 20% for some SKUs in some regions. It says the new report suggests that the price hike is due to the quote, underperformance of AI PCs, which aren't being adopted on a wide scale as initially expected. So at least according to this, AI PCs aren't selling anywhere near as well as Intel and likely others originally thought. I am shocked, shocked. And next up, I recently discussed the new Agisa code from AMD, which is used by board partners to make BIOS updates. And in that code, we got confirmation that these support new AMD APUs based on Kraken Point, meaning next-gen desktop APUs. Well, we now have absolute confirmation that this is the case, not just looking at code to make the assessment, as a pre-release BIOS from ASUS officially confirms that this adds support for new APUs. Now, like I said in my last video on this, we're so far seeing Kraken Point, which likely won't be all that much of an upgrade in terms of gaming performance because it actually comes with fewer iGPU cores than the current gen APUs, the 8000G APUs. Now, it does come with RDNA 3.5 instead of RDNA 3.0, but that's not all that much of an improvement. Hopefully these will just be lower end models though with APUs based on Strix Point also coming. Time, as always, will tell. And lastly for today, AMD is about to release their fastest gaming CPUs ever, with one called X3D2. Don't get this confused with their second gen 3D vCache. This is a massive change, at least according to one well-known leaker who's gotten quite a bit of information right in the past. As you can see, according to him, we're looking at two chips here. The Ryzen 9 9950X3D2 and the Ryzen 7 9850X3D. So for those who may not know, current X3D chips with more than 8 cores like the 9950X3D have two chiplets with cores on them, one with 3D vCache and one without. When you play a game on that chip, it parks the cores on the non-3D vCache chiplet. They do this because a 3D vCache chiplet has a ton of L3 cache on it for the CPU to grab data directly from the chip instead of going out to slower system memory as often, meaning the non-3D vCache chiplet would just hold things back. That and there's a penalty for cross-chiplet communication. Well, according to this, the 9950X3D comes with a whopping 192 megabytes of L3 cache, which is a huge jump from the 9950X3D now, meaning this bad boy comes with 3D vCache on both chiplets. Now, in the past, AMD specifically said that the cost wasn't worth the performance gain when having both chiplets use 3D vCache, but the price has likely come down a bit since then, plus as games use more than 8 cores, the benefits get larger. Of course, you do still have a cross CCX penalty, but Windows Scheduler can lower that and the additional cache likely negates it. Moving back to the new chip, you can see that it has a higher TDP of 200 watts. And while it has the same base clock of 4.3 GHz, the boost is 100 MHz lower at 5.6. That's of course not a big difference thanks to AMD's second gen 3D vCache. Not only that, but he also revealed a new mid-range X3D chip, the Ryzen 7 9850X3D. Of course, this one only has a single CCD, so AMD can't up the 3D vCache like the other one. 
Instead, this bad boy gets a boost clock of 5.6 GHz, which is a very nice 400 MHz increase over the 9800X3D. Basically, both of these chips look faster than any other gaming chip on the market right now, with the 9950X3D2 a wild card. It could just be billed as the fastest gaming chip out there, but some professional workloads do like additional cache as well. Either way, these are definitely looking like some interesting chips. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for these new gaming CPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to save money on your next PC hardware purchase by visiting Micro Center down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.